Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is May 8744, and today, guys, we'll be doing my El Clasico preview, guys. And this will be a very good El Clasico, guys. I'm very much looking forward to this. Best of luck to both teams here, guys, because this El Clasico will be one of the best El Clasicos we've had in quite some time. Because I don't remember any El Clasico since probably the Messi-Ronaldo era that's been this hype this much to this degree. And I'm hoping that this will deliver a good game, guys. So, of course, we'll give you guys I'll give you guys that line as for both teams. We'll talk about the tactics both teams will use. Players to look out for. Players that could be a liability. Give you guys the head-to-head -head record. Talk about the tactics. And then do a combined 11 for fun. And then give you guys a little prediction. And so I hope you guys do enjoy. Real guys, we'll also be doing a live reaction after the game at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So without further ado, let's go and get started. So let's look at the Real Madrid 11. So I expect Real Madrid to play somewhat of a 4-1-2-1-2 formation. Something like this. Kind of a variation. Now... Real Madrid could play a 4-4-2, which also is in the realms of possibility. But I'm going to assume that they'll play a 4-1-2-1-2 because this is the formation they mainly used last season. And this is where they had a lot of success. In. And I look at this 11 and I see the liabilities in this. I see the issues with this 11. I think the big issues with the fullbacks in particular. Vasquez, as good as he is offensively. Offensively, he's amazing. I remember the El Clasico that was the Santiago Bernabal last season. He was amazing because he won a penalty, he scored a goal, and got an assist. Defensively, the guy's a horror show. Horror show, essentially. That defensively, he's so atrocious that this is where something Real Madrid, Barcelona could capitalize. We could actually um, get him out of the game. And for Lamendi, he's a great uh, defense. He's a good defensive fullback, but dude, he doesn't offer you much going forward. And as good as he has been defensively, he was quite shockingly bad against Borussia Dortmund. And I look at this Real Madrid team. Chuameni is going to be fully fit. I am assuming that Chuameni was rested against Dortmund for this game alone. And I think Chuameni will actually be a huge key reason for Real Madrid because he is so influential to how Real Madrid are so defensively. And I think that's why Real Madrid looks so poor defensively against Dortmund is because his presence wasn't there. And I think he's going to make you huge. And I think Jude Bellingham, this will be a game for him to prove. Because remember, in the last two El Clasicos, Jude has scored the goals. So it's going to be interesting to see if Jude can do that again. And obviously for Vinicius Jr., we know how integral he is to Real Madrid. His speed and behind his counterattacks. And of course, we know that Barca will probably have a plan to man mark him. Well, that's what we did under Xavi. I'm not sure if Flick will do that. We'll talk about it more that when we get to the Barca segment. And then obviously Mbappe, of course, we know his record against Barca. His record speaks for himself. And Mbappe scored in every single game against Barca when he's played with PSG. The only time he didn't score was when Barca beat them 3-2 at the Parc de France. Other than that, though, Mbappe scored in every other game. I believe he's got five goals i believe to his belt so shout out to mbappe and i think this is a game that he has to perform in. and i think for real madrid the key for real madrid is that there's so much uncertainty with who's going to the lineup in particular and i think there's some uncertainty with uh what angelotti is going to be doing because he's going to have to try to figure out how to get the best of this real madrid team because and i think another player that's also needed another player that's also been under the radar this season is valverde i think valverde has been amazing for real madrid this season in fact i would actually argue one of real madrid's best players he has been so influential, and obviously Luka Modric as well. So, if I'm Carl, if I'm expecting that they'll play some kind of formation like this. I don't know if they'll play exactly like this, but I have some kind of idea, and I think they'll play in a counterattacking style. As for Barca, I think the lineup speaks for itself. I think we're going to roll off the same eleven, uh, like against um, uh, what is it called Bayern Munich, and I think the only little blemish that I could maybe see is the fact that maybe we'll see Fermin Lopez start, maybe Danny Olmo will start instead. But I feel like Fermi Lopez just had a great game against Byron, so it would be kind of harsh to bench him. Although I do feel like Danny Olmo is obviously a better player. So it'll be interesting to see if um, uh, Flick makes that decision. But other than that, though, I think the rest of the lineup is pretty self-explanatory. I don't see uh, Flick making any other, many other changes, and I feel like this is a good 11. So now let's go to the combined 11, guys. Combined 11. Um, I feel like the combined 11, I was pretty straightforward. I think Lunin is the better goalkeeper. And I, I forgot to mention this earlier. Lunin is going to be playing this game. El Clasico because Courtois is injured. And also Rodrigo is injured as well. So keep in mind those two players are injured. So I look at the... I think Lunin is a better goalkeeper than Pena. And then I look at the back line. I think it's pretty solid. It's right. I think Baldi's been better. I think Barca Rudiger has been good. Kunde has obviously been great. And I think Pedri Valverde forming the double pivot has been great. And then obviously Rafinha, Yamal, and Lewandowski. So you can see right here, guys. There's only a few Real Madrid players in this 11. Only have, well, five Real Madrid players, essentially. So there's actually a little bit more for Barca. So it just shows that how much better Barca have been this season than Real Madrid. 
Look in the head to head record. Real Madrid's got 105 wins, Barca 100 wins, and draws has been 52 times. And tactics. What are the tactics coming into this game? I think for Real Madrid is that they were, obviously they're going to be playing a counter attacking style. I think they'll obviously play a counter attacking style. They're going to obviously play with a lot of speed in behind, especially with Vinicius and Mbappe running through their Barca defense. And one thing I've also noticed with Real Madrid is they've had very slow first halves in particular in the last couple of games. So I think in this kind of game in El Clasico like this, they cannot have a slow first half because if they do, Barca could capitalize. And I think that's going to be very key. So for Real Madrid, I expect them to play a counter attacking style and some kind of a speed based variation. And with that, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how that one goes because, like I said, Real Madrid haven't been that great this season. Defensively, they haven't been that great. Attacking wise, they've been good at times, but they haven't been as good as we made them out to be. You know, Real Madrid is kind of struggling in that sense. Whereas Barcelona, on the other hand, are looking very good. We are we are amazing right now in La Liga. Uh, three points clear of Real Madrid. Um, we're going to play a high line. Now, that's actually a big concern for me in this game is that. Will fl how will the high line affect us? Are we going to use a super aggressive high line or some kind of conservative high line? Because I feel like in a game like this, you don't want to play a super aggressive high line. Especially against the likes of Vinicius Jr. and the likes of Mbappe. They're going to thrive upon this. And I, I said this before, I'm going to say this again, guys. Real Madrid's the best team in transition in the world. If there's any team you don't want to play against in transition in the world, it is Real Madrid. Real Madrid is a team that operate or so they know how to they know how to break teams down that play a high line and i think this could be a, a key thing for barca's and this kind of game we shouldn't play a high line or be super aggressive and i'm hoping that what flick did in the preseason is what we're going to do here in this game is that be, play just conserve play normal but obviously don't go super aggressive but obviously still play a high line but not to like the full degree then obviously we got to do a possession based system as well which obviously makes sense you know we're going to obviously try to um have more possession than Real Madrid, and I think that's going to be very key. And I think for Barca, what's very key is that we take advantage of Real Madrid. Because if Real Madrid have a slow first half, we got to score as many goals as we can. we got to be clinical with their chance. That is something that Real Madrid has been known to do, is that when you give Real Madrid a sniffer opportunity, they're going to get back in the game. So I think it's very crucial that we try to get as many goals as we can in the first half, because this is what, this is what killed us in the previous El Clasico. I remember the one in the camp now in particular, where we should have we should have scored so many goals in the first half. But guess what? We didn't. Real Madrid got back in the game, and Real Madrid made the comeback. Because once Real Madrid gets that equalizing goal, they will make a comeback. And it's going to be very hard for us to come back from that position. So what's very key is that we score as many goals as we can when we are dominant. That way, we can see out the game and finish the deal. So what's my prediction, guys? It's a very difficult game to call, to call guys. And I really could see either team winning. And that's what makes it very 50-50. Because even though I think Barca are coming to this one and more favorites than Real Madrid, because it's at the Santiago Bernabeu, and historically speaking, Barca do have a better record than Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, I just feel like for me, it's going to be a very interesting game, very exciting game. And I feel like it's going to be very entertaining. And for that reason, I actually have this game finishing a 2-2 draw. I was tempted to go with Barca to win 3-2, but something just tells me that Barca will take the lead, then Real Madrid will equalize, then Barca will take the lead. I just have a feeling it'll be a basketball game. I just have a feeling it'll be a basketball game because I think both defenses have not been as good, and I feel like both offenses are looking very good. So I just think it's going to be a very even game, very offensive game, and a very even manner. But I could definitely see Barca winning. Obviously, Real Madrid could win as well. It should be a very interesting game, and that's what makes this game so difficult to call is that it could go either direction, guys. It's 50-50. And I think for Barca, as I said, man, even though we historically have the better record at the Burnabout, we haven't really been good at the Burnabout in the recent years. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get a result here. And so, yeah, I'm hoping that we can at least get a draw here, which I'll be satisfied with. And as a Barca fan, if we could get a draw here at the Burnabout, I would take it. I would take it. And for Real Madrid, I think if they I think they need to win this game, especially this being the Burnabout, at this being their home crib. If they don't win this game, I think this might not... This might not be so good in the long term. But it'll be interesting to see what happens, guys. It'll be interesting to see what happens. So I hope you guys did enjoy this little quick preview, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know guys your predictions as well. And yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy.